Let's talk about fractions. This is the third of three videos I have on this topic, so make sure you check out the first two. Links are below. Now let's get into operations. We'll start with addition and subtraction, and we'll begin with a simple example. One-fifth plus two-fifths. To add these together, we simply keep the denominator the same, and then add the numerators together. One plus two is three, so our answer will be three-fifths. And when we're asked to subtract, it's the exact same idea. Let's say we have 5 over 7 minus 3 over 7. This will give you an answer that is also over 7. Subtract the numerators, and you'll see that your final answer is 2 over 7. Now, these examples are relatively straightforward because we have what are called common denominators. That is to say, the numbers on the bottom of these fractions are already the same, so we simply keep them the same and add the numerators. But what if these numbers are different? What do we do then? Well, say we have 1 half plus 3 tenths. It will be our first priority to find a common denominator, or change these fractions, so that both their denominators are the same. Now, when I say change the fractions, the options we have available are really just to multiply or divide either one or both of the denominators. I see here that we have denominators of 2 and 10, and I'm fairly confident I can multiply 2 by a number to make it into 10. So our goal should be to make the denominators both 10. To turn 2 into 10, all I have to do is multiply by 5. But when I change the denominator of a fraction, it's important that we change the numerator in the same way, so that the overall value of the fraction stays the same. So I'll also multiply the numerator by 5, and this will give us 5 over 10. So to recap, we changed 1 half to 5 tenths. And if you watch the video on reducing fractions, you already know that these are equivalent fractions. The second fraction will remain exactly the same, 3 over 10. We've done nothing to change it. And now we can perform our addition. 5 plus 3 is 8, so we end up with 8 over 10. And remember, always reduce your final answer to lowest terms. So this 8 over 10 becomes 4 fifths, or 4 over 5. I simply divided both the numerator and denominator by a value of 2 which was the greatest common factor. Now, let's do another example. Say we have 1 third plus 1 half. Well, there's no whole number I could multiply 3 by to get 2, and there's no whole number that I could multiply 2 by to get 3. So unlike the last question, I need to change both of these denominators. I'll pick my common denominator by thinking of the smallest number I can fit both 3 and 2 inside a whole number of times. Or in other words, the smallest number that has both 3 and 2 as factors. That number would be 6. So, how do I change 3 to 6? Well, I simply multiply by 2. And if I do that, I should do the same to the numerator, giving me a numerator of 2. Next, I need to change the other denominator to 6 as well. I can do that by multiplying by 3. I do the same to the numerator, and I end up with 3 over 6. Now we can do our addition and get 5 over 6 as our final answer. And again, we check if this can be reduced, but in this case it cannot. That means we're all done. Next example. We have some mixed fractions now, 1 and a half plus 2 and 2 fifths. Now you have some options here, and I'll show you a couple different methods that you can use. One way you could approach this is by turning both fractions into improper fractions. Then add them together, just like we've been doing so far. Let's try that first. 1 and a half turns into 3 over 2, and 2 and 2 fifths turns into 12 over 5. Link is in the description for the video on changing forms if you don't know how I'm doing this. Now we need a common denominator. I think we should choose 10, because that's the smallest number I can think of that both 5 and 2 are factors of. Now we need to times 2 by 5 to get 10, so we'll times 3 by 5 as well and that gives us 15 over 10. Next, we times 5 by 2 to get 10, so we multiply 12 by 2 as well, and that gives you 24 over 10. Next, we can finally do our addition. 15 plus 24 is 39, so we get this answer 39 over 10. Now, this can't be reduced, but we could write it as a mixed fraction. 10 goes into 39 three times, we'll have 9 left over, so we get 3 and 9 over 10. 
Again, go watch the video on changing fraction forms if you're not able to do this. Now, I promised another method, and here it is. You can start by splitting up these mixed fractions so that the whole number component and the fractional component are written as sums. One and a half is equal to one plus one half. Two and two fifths is equal to two plus two fifths. Make sense? Now you can add these whole numbers together to get a value of three, and you can work on these nice proper fractions to sum them together. We find their common denominator, it'll be the same as before, and we'll end up with 3 plus 9 tenths, or 3 and 9 tenths, as I've written it here. Now if you're subtracting mixed numbers, you have to be a little bit more careful. You can still use either method I showed you here, but if you choose to go with the second method, there are some things that you should look out for. Let's look at an example now. Let's split up these fractions, and notice that I've put that second sum inside a set of brackets. The reason for this is that the entire thing is being subtracted. So to make sure I'm applying that negative to both the whole number and the fractional component, I'm simply placing it all in the set of brackets that's being subtracted. Now you can distribute that minus into the bracket, and you'll get this. Notice that both of those terms now have a minus in front of them. That's the first part that people often forget. They'll often add the one quarter at the end there instead of subtracting it. So take your time and be careful. Now, three minus one is two, and everything else remains the same. Now we just need a common denominator for our fractions. And luckily, two does go into four, so we don't need to change both fractions, just the first one. We can multiply both numerator and denominator by two, and we'll get two over four minus one over four, giving us an answer of one fourth. Now with two plus one quarter, we'll end up with two and a quarter for our final answer. Now this was nice at the end because we ended up with two plus a fraction, but what if we didn't? What if there was a minus here instead? Let's look at an example like that. Say we had three and a half minus one and three quarters. So now this fractional component I'm subtracting is larger than the fraction component here that I'm subtracting from. Now I'll fast forward a bit because this is the same process that we just looked at, but when I break this down, expand the bracket, combine the whole numbers, find a common denominator, move this up here, then finally combine those fractions, I end up here with a whole number minus a fraction. Two minus a quarter, as you might be able to guess, is equal to one and three quarters. But what if you're struggling with that last step? Or maybe the numbers are more complicated than they are here. How then would I solve this? Well, remember, every whole number has a secret one that it's being divided by. So instead of two, I can write down two over one. Then I can find a common denominator and subtract the fractions. Then at the very end, I can convert my answer to a mixed fraction. Another useful method would be to change the two into one and four quarters. Four quarters, of course, is just equal to one. So this is one plus one, which is two. Doing this makes it a bit more clear why subtracting one quarter gives you the answer of one and three quarters. Whichever combinations of these methods you prefer, or if there's some other method to use that I haven't mentioned, then by all means, math is math. Don't use a method you hate for no reason do what works for you. Now let's jump into another example. Say we have four and one third plus two and five over six. Let's split these up as we've been doing. And looking at the denominators, I think it's clear that we can simply multiply the numbers in our first fraction by two to give us a common denominator of six. Let's go ahead and add the whole numbers and the fractions at the same time. If we do this, we'll get six plus seven over six. And this is interesting because the fraction we got here is larger than one, right? It's an improper fraction. The numerator is bigger than the denominator. So we should change it into a mixed fraction because we don't want our final answer to be a mixed fraction containing an improper fraction. That would just be silly. So we get one and one over six, and we can easily add that to six to get seven and one over six. Remember, we're just adding these whole number components together. Okay, here are some practice questions for you to try 
Pause the video now to give them a go, otherwise the answers will be revealed in 3 seconds. Now we've done adding and subtracting, and that took a bit of time, so let's end this on a quick note. Multiplying and dividing. Yes, it's far easier to multiply or divide fractions than it is to add or subtract them, and let me show you why. If you're asked to multiply these two fractions, 1 half and 3 quarters, all you have to do is first multiply the numerators together, that will give you the number 3, then multiply the denominators together, and that will give you the number 8. So our final answer is 3 over 8. And that's it. No common denominator required, nothing like that, nothing fancy, just simply multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. Now. If you have mixed numbers, like this question, I recommend you first change these to improper fractions. Again, all I'm doing is the whole number times the denominator plus the numerator. That gives you the new numerator. Same for this other fraction. Follow the same process. Now we can multiply. 7 times 11 is 77, and 2 times 4 is 8, and you're all done. Unless, of course, you want to change this into a mixed number, but I'll let you do that on your own. Now, that's multiplication. When we divide, it's almost as easy. There are two main methods to doing this, and the first goes like this. Take the first numerator, the 2 in this case, and multiply it by the second denominator, the 7. This gives you 14. Then, multiply the first denominator, the 3, with the second numerator, the 5. This will give you 15, and you're done. I like to draw arrows like this when I do these questions, just to help me remember what gets multiplied by what. The other method for dividing is one that I like the most. You start by changing the division sign to multiplication. And in order to do this, all you have to do is flip the second fraction, or write the reciprocal of it. That's what we call when we flip a fraction. Now we can multiply like we were doing before, and you can see here that you get the same answer. So again, it's up to you to decide how you want to approach these problems. Now we have some more practice questions here, so pause the video now and give it a go, otherwise the answers will be revealed in 3 seconds. This has been Operations with Fractions. Make sure you've watched all three of the Fraction videos, and maybe check out some of my other over 100 videos covering various topics of high school mathematics. Remember to like or even subscribe to the channel if you found this video helpful. And of course, thanks for watching.